It's the Union Economic Development Committee. Uh, Christopher Constant here. Nick Dre. Pete Peterson. Dean Gates. Uh, Brian Young, my name's Marvin. Mandy Honest, the clerk's office. Dean uh, Sterling. All right, so on the agenda today we have two items, uh, marijuana establishment application review, and then a review of amendments to Title 21 regarding marijuana land use. So why don't we dive right into the secret garden? Uh, for the licensing portion, uh, all of the licensing restrictions were addressed in their operating plan. Um, there was no taxes, fees, or fines down by any of the licensing or affiliates, and there weren't any extra conditions recommended on the license. So, um, no. have you all had a chance to read your your packet? Yeah. Any questions or thoughts? Did we see anything from the, uh, down the community council for that area? Yeah, the Fairview Community Council has been supportive of this petitioner in both of their previous applications, and there hasn't been any change at this time. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Council, do you want me to give you an overview of this? Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Steve Gregg and Kansas is applying for a special aid permit for marijuana manufacturing facility within a D3 district. The uh, manufacturing facility will cover 4,000 with a square feet. That one will be occupying the unit within an existing commercial use building located southeast of the intersection of Gamble Street and East 15th Avenue. The applicant has, has received previous approval for both the marijuana cultivation facility and retail sales establishment, which are co located in this proposed facility. Uh, the proposed site lacks quite pedestrian access, sufficient snow storage, and adequate parking for all uses on site. Additionally, as of the writing of the staff packet, the petitioner has not applied for a change to use permit for development services. Suggested issues staff has put conditions uh, on the license and special language permit. And additionally, marijuana manufacturing facilities which only produce edibles are allowed in the B3. The petitioner mentioned the use of extraction methods in their application. Extraction and other types of manufacturing are not allowed within the B3, and the applicant shall be prohibited from doing so. The provided site plans do not show any major alterations to the building facade or structure that would make it of dissimilar character, scale, or size when compared to surrounding structures. And the planning department recommends approval of special land use permit subject to the conditions that stated in the staff. Yep. Yes. Uh, so, um, I don't know if you guys remember, and I wish Francis was here. Um, can you grab him? Because I think he's important in this conversation. Francis, uh, in November, at the beginning of November, um, I asked him to clarify something he said about B3 manufacturing. And he said, sure, again, B3. Uh, manufacturing is allowed with extraction as long as it's co-located with the retail and I already knew at that point that's not what the code reflected but that's exactly how I remembered it being passed and interpreted in the code so before submitting the special land use permit I talked to my clients and I said hey guys you know I thought manufacturing had to be co-located with retail and then you could do extraction but the code says you can only do edibles at this point you know we had already formulated everything and whatnot and the architects had in their code study, you know, thought that B3 uh, was okay for manufacturing extraction when it's co-located with retail. Um, and Francis had made that statement, so I thought, you know, maybe I'm just reading the code wrong. Um, but I think what happened is when, and Francis and I were trying to dig into this, but when we were doing the, um, and I think Pete and, Pete and Dick were on the, the assembly when this happened, we were, we were actually adopting the full body of, of marijuana code regulations. There were, like 30 some amendments and we tried to pick through them to see if like there was oh good francis is here hi um francis and i kind of tried to dig through it to see like why did francis and i think this way for so long and i remember erica saying this and the architect also thought it was the same way you know co-location extraction was okay and so we try to figure out and find where we and i didn't find it and i don't think i don't know if francis you didn't find anything no. to figure out how we kind of got to that method um, of, of logic and uh, so what I think maybe what happened was I think the intent was to not allow for um, explosive types of extraction right. in B3. We were concerned about explosives. Right. And this application, and, and I know this isn't going to get fixed today and I don't expect it to, but this application has to do with um, CO2 extraction which is just you know, like what goes into soda pop to make it bubble um, and uh, you know crock pot and what's that water and hash ice, ice water? Just 
just basic ice water extraction. So that's just ice, it's just ice water that you put the plant matter in and then you shake it up? Yeah, oil falls and uh, plant matter normally floats. So by a simple uh, agitation, they just separate and, uh, and then you pull out the bags with the leaf material and then um, kind of a, a, a screen then collects the, the oil material. So, so, so we know, I mean, we know, I've talked to Ryan, I've talked to Francis, you know, we kind of... And the rosin press. And the rosin press, which is a, a... Hydraulic press. It's just a press that comes and squeezes the plant matter out, and there's no solvent. It's so they're, you know, so th those are the kinds of extractions that are in here. I know they're not allowed in the code, for what the code says. Um, Francis, do you want to add anything to that? Like, yeah, know? I'm sorry, I was late. I was on the phone with uh, Marcos Sicaro and, and Newt Kirkwood. He had a weird... Had he had real questions, and I was trying to get him off the phone, so it was hard. Um, so I wasn't trying to avoid the meeting, although I would have liked to. I don't like being wrong, but um, I, I, but I don't really think you were wrong. I think you're. In, uh -huh. I think the intent was really clear, and I think that's why we were all on the same page. Well, you were very nice, and uh, yeah, it was really uh, thoughtful of you. I think to uh, let me know that you're going to be raising this issue today too. I think so. We're all on the same page. Um, uh, here's what you know. Uh, probably how, how we would start. Um, when you look at the table of allowed uses, that is, you know, all the different uses, categories, and all that, and then the zoning districts, that, that table, it has the T for where, you know, marijuana is, is allowed in the chart um, for all four license types, you know, the cultivation, retail, store, the um, manufacturing and testing facilities, those four types. Um, it has the T saying it's an allowed use in, in the B3 district, the I-1 district and the I-2 district. So we have three districts where marijuana are allowed and all four types of licenses are allowed within them. But you have to take a step further and then look at these you know, use-specific regulations. So you can't just say, look at the chart and say, well, you know, it says manufacturing is allowed in the B-3. You have to look at the use-specific standards and read into it. And so one of the things that's interesting is, so they tried to keep industrial sounding uses in the industrial districts and not allow them to be introduced to the, into the commercial district. And then vice versa, they tried with, the, with these regulations to keep um, uh, retail stores out of heavy industrial. So when you look at the use specific standards, well it says that a retail store is allowed in the I-2 heavy, heavy uh, uh, industrial district. It's only if it's in conjunction with manufacturing or cultivation. And then conversely, you can't have manufacturing or um, uh, cultivation in, uh, well, I'm sorry, I, mean, I See, that's what we thought, yeah. 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 You, <laughs> can't have, you can't have cultivation in the, um, in the B3 district unless it's in conjunction with, uh, with retail. Okay, so I had said, um, and I thought this, and uh, I was uh, wrong, the regulations um, don't allow for um, manufacturing um, uh, in the B3 unless it's just, uh, unless there's no extraction. You can have it, um, you know, Momo's Bakery, you can have um, uh, uh, manufacturing, essentially there's only a bakery and there's no extraction. Um, and uh, yeah, what I said was wrong, and I think that Jim is trying to make the case that, that you know, if there were safeguards or something like that, I'm not gonna make your case, but, but if there were safeguards that, you know, if you can have cultivation, in, in the B3, why couldn't you have manufacturing if the safety aspect was covered? Yeah, I just like, you know, I went back and looked at the mm -hmm. staff comments and to the amendment, I think it was spring um, that brought the amendment, um, <coughs> who's on the planning and zoning commission, and so I'm not too familiar with the vice went back through the, the records. He brought the amendment to allow for B3 manufacturing and staff recommended against it because there was no co-location of retail, so no um, requirement that there be some retail component in a B3 area, and that was the, the staff's response. So, you know, I don't, you know, no, I can't, I can't find, figure out if we like no. messed up or if this is just what it is, but what I would suggest or what I would hope um, that would be considered, and again, I, I don't expect it to happen today, is maybe, um, maybe a, the concept to direct staff to look into a text amendment to maybe amend the code to allow for manufacturing of non, Extraction types that are non-explosive, like the crock pot and butter, the magic with the water, ice water hash, hydraulic press, which is just squeezing the plant matter, because that's not explosive. And I think that was the, our concern it was no explosive types of extraction in B3. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, what um, 
kind of chemical that is used that is explosive, that is well, dangerous? Butane? Butane, and that's not in this business plan at all. Right, so the amendment could be uh, simple in saying that uh, using extraction methods that don't include butane. Butane, hexane, all those zanes. <laughs> right. Right? Or well, whatever, petroleum. butane or dangerous gases or whatever. Yeah, exactly. yeah petroleum, yeah, that's good.
So the, we have the Planning and Zoning Commission to uh, thank for, for um, you know, some of this sort of combination um, and that's what we have today. There's been three ordinances on marijuana that have been adopted. There was an original one and then some, some cleanup. You guys uh, were, I think, all around for the one where uh, um, you wanted the planning department to have the ability to deal with some really minor modifications, you know, where you have your um, you know, display areas within a store um, without having to go back before the assembly. That was one of them. So there have been three total uh, marijuana ordinances thus far. And, uh, you know, Ryan just sort of laid out, he's holding the, the actual issue response or minutes on, 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 on where we got with the rules that we have today. Okay, a quick question now. Is this discussion germane to this license at this time? Um, Just, I mean, is it important to this license? It is, but I don't expect, you know, I don't expect this to be resolved by the next meeting because I think it takes time and I think we got to think through it. I appreciated Ryan's comments about, you know, we allow other hazardous uses, but um, you know, gas stations have to have a lot of insurance protection. They have to go through, I mean, we have to go through regulations, but I would assume gas stations probably have to go through a lot more regulations and inspections. So I would, you know, maybe, maybe we, if we're going to consider it, I would suggest maybe we actually kind of stick to that no explosive extraction types in V3, just because I think it would be um, maybe like a base. And then if it, if, if it, if it's if we're wrong and nobody blows up ever, we could talk about it later. Um, but yeah, I mean it's important to this license. It's a it's a huge building. It's the old um, do, I would say it wrong. Julie's Julie's uh, Julie's building. Um, you know the extraction is a big part of the business. My clients they know. I mean my client knows about this because I called them and like almost like you know in tears when I figured it out at first. Like oh crap guys, I think I was wrong. But. Um, so they're aware of it, they know about the issue, they know that if it's going to get changed, it's gonna take some work, and it's not necessarily gonna happen. I mean, they don't know for sure if it's gonna get changed. I mean, there's nothing. So, question to the planning department. Uh, how challenging <coughs> it will be to craft an amendment that achieves that goal of coming up with a use that is not explosive but allows other types of construction? That'd be pretty straightforward. We've got a water right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think that it's really doable, and you know what felt it's, we have in our penal code and how to read a production line, uh, manufacturing processes for a perimeter license that specifies uh, actually types of processes that are not allowed. It's often based extraction that there's in such and such in which rights for you. And my point is, though, that we can specify the type of manufacturing process around the B3 or not around the B3 if we wanted to do so with an amendment. So I think it's a policy call, that's what Frank is talking about. Legally, it's very possible to do so by an amendment to Title 21. And you know, we have an ordinance next to our agenda, and uh, this version that's in the works. So if uh, the comments here, if somebody never wanted to propose something that would you know, address the situation and allow um, some manufacturing, the privy between the other zanes in the BP district, then it's very possible to do so, then possibly uh, at the time of January 9th, assuming we can if that was a goal that uh, somebody wanted to sponsor. So, this is kind of stepping off the license question briefly. Is there any objection to investigating that and having a proposal drafted and ready for us and for introduction into that test version? I have no objection, so consider it corrected. So, um, so uh, if the assembly were to adopt a text amendment to allow um, certain types of extraction, extraction with manufacturing license in the B3, you know, some new rules, that would be a time for these guys. So, what would be the process for them um, uh, to? Uh, after such rules were to be adopted, theoretically, I'm not saying that it happens, but if it did happen, then um, what would be the process for you guys to then go and request to have the extraction? I actually, go ahead, Brian. Just uh, 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 I do have a provision uh, in the AR uh, stating that the facility shall be manufactured edibles in accordance with the current 
abstraction other types of manufacturing opportunity. But essentially, that requirement in the AR um, and their uh, condition certificate, which will be drafted later, would kind of just become null and void. I mean, they're already in a V3, they're already in a food manufacturing facility, and they would just now be allowed all this abstraction. That would be the portion of the capital tax amendment, but they would still be in compliance with that portion of the code after it was changed. Correct. <laughs> She made a good point to yeah. Okay, that. so yeah, why don't you go ahead? Um, so if that's the portion of code that's going to have the text amendment done to it, this will still be applicable to their special land use permit. They will still be in compliance with it afterwards. Um, it's just denoting okay. that portion of code. So as it's prohibiting it right now, it will allow it later, and it's still the same record. I want to not directly reflect to Mr. Bosby trying this. Oh, yeah. She has laryngitis and can't speak, which I think oh, wow. God voted with a radio person that can't speak. <laughs> well, glad to have you here. Sorry. Take that off the record. But anyway, she is here. Okay, so if I'm hearing correctly, then there is no need to ask the petitioner to wait one more meeting because if we make this change, their current, if this is approved, will be also. So we're good to go. Okay, so then we requested that from the planning department to work with me to get that in the amendment. Mr. Oh, yeah, I was thinking of the uh, uh, I guess because the implementation is number seven, is that what you mean for each unit? And the uh, site's code 21 of uh, five pictures, little three, three. And uh, we're deleting that subsection, actually, you know where it is. So it's like, if you will kind of, I guess, it was still right next to the door to the table. But uh, I think that the language here in 7, that second sentence, um, extraction of text manufacturing or prohibited, maybe uh, you need a change here to that sentence. It says manufacturing extraction, or just manufacturing is a big intense part. So whatever kind of yeah. uh, if you have a code change, I can just discuss it. Yeah, 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 Okay, so bring that back then. Um, <laughs> will, will it be the department making those changes before the application comes before the body next week? Or how will that happen? Do we make an amendment? The assembly will have to make an amendment. And Dean can, uh, Dean can draft, it. draft it, and we can debate it, and <laughs> I can pass it at our, possibly pass it at our January 9th meeting. Yeah. Wait, this, when is this one scheduled to go? Um, I thought it was January 9th. Okay, this January 9th. Hold on, everyone. It's going to have quiet. I'm sorry, 19th, December 19th. I'm sorry. Yes, next Tuesday. It's okay. Right. Yeah, and I think what this point Dean was proposing was to add it to the as into the S version of the marijuana land use proposal that's coming up already at this meeting. And so I think that's what I understood. Um the this AR and everything describes subsection. In the ordinance, uh, it's in for introduction on Tuesday. And I think the public hearing is set for January 9th. But we would have an S version of the ordinance with the coach change. Yeah. So I think that kind of covers the basis on that. So, okay, you guys figure out that change. Now, are there other matters for discussion on the license, Mr. Trainbook? You're going to do these whole place? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you, what are your plans for security? Because that is, that part of town mm -hmm. is a real problem. You're not that part of Black Angus. Right, yeah. It's, it's been suggested Sorry. that it's, right. Um, it's been suggested that I saw the, the, the thing you did, Chris. Um, the oh, news. Yeah. Um, it's been suggested that by, by adding the cameras uh, to the exterior of the building that it could potentially help clean up the neighborhood. Okay. So. And then um, green, is it green spot? The green, the connection. green connection. So we talked to their owners. Monica. Yeah, Monica and, and her husband. And so the brush, I guess the old owners of Julie's didn't want the brush cut down. And so then homeless people would sleep in there right. and use it as restrooms and whatnot. And so um, James has committed to. I, I did actually. Oh, you did already? The first week to do that. Yeah. Clear cut it, huh? Yeah, because yeah, it just gets so high and people kind of. Yeah. 
yeah, all the alders. We're gonna rip them out eventually too, but just depending on what happens, we have to add parking to the rear, so, and then potentially a, a fence around it as well. So. <coughs> we appreciate you coming in there. I just wanna make sure you understand what you're getting into. Absolutely do. Actually, or maybe I don't, but. he moved into the neighborhood as well. So Good. he lives yeah. just a few blocks away. So he's not in Gurgwood anymore? No. Yeah, and so he, he knows what the, what's on the ground there. And so be able to run there. Yeah, James did a bunch of um, walking around. How many neighbors did you walk and knock on doors for? A dozen. Yeah, he spent like uh, one afternoon just going around knocking, introducing himself and whatnot. And so I think he saw some of the characters of the neighborhood. Yeah. All right, Pete. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if you all noticed it toward the end of your packet. You've got, we always have the listing of the number of police calls to, <laughs> to this address. I have never seen a list this long in all these applications that we've gone through. So there certainly is potential for you to clean the neighborhood up there. Yeah. Um, a couple of the neighbors are definitely on first uh, name basis with 911. I would imagine. Yeah, yeah it's uh, super sad. Okay, I have a couple questions as well, or at least one. Um, ownership wise, are all three of your businesses the same ownership structure, the same people? It's just him, and then his dad owns the building okay. and leases the building. Thank you. Is that okay? Any other questions? Yeah, thank you. Uh, is there a motion from the body? Just move to approve. Okay. All right, any objection? All right, so then on time, we're gonna have this one move forward and we'll come up with a solution to the manufacturing conundrum. Thank you very much. All right, so the next item is the review of amendments regarding proposed AO 21 for marijuana land use, which is what we're talking about for the S version. Yep. I guess uh, a brief on this because we haven't had a chance to read it. So I guess, uh, you know, you got the 17 or 75 that supported this item. I'm not sure I don't know if you want to go through the uh, initial ordinance and then I go through the constitutional before we go to this. So we did go through the uh, initial ordinance on November 2nd, so I guess it's up to the committee members if they would like to readdress um, this original ordinance or just go through the proposed changes again. Any, yeah, let's just go. So just for a matter of business, we have to be concluded at 10 because at 10.30, the assembly has an important meeting downtown. Yes, and so um, I think an expedited review would be better. Let's hear about the expert, the changes. Okay, so jump to our resolution. I guess so I'll just go through and um, it's a draft form, so we don't have to see Come yes, up to you. God, the election is going, and you have some questions for you. First. So, uh, I'll just go page by page and hit the bold and underlined changes. So, on page one, and, uh, line 30, we're just adding to the easy to the whereas paragraph where this was discussed in the SVG changes. Um, and then the next <laughs> version change is on page three. Uh, the sentence is added to. Uh, Little, uh, it's the security plan is not required to show location or placing the security cameras in areas covered by you. Uh, Mr. Wellington pointed out, uh, if you see on the phone with us, I thought he was going to be calling me. Next meeting. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Wellington and Ms. Minister now is familiar with the issue. Some applicants have complained, I guess, about uh, showing the security cameras <coughs> at locations on the security plan, which is part of their application in public record. It allows, I guess, criminals who are interested to find out where catastrophic guys have been around security for the building. So uh, this is just a uh, such you'll have to include that in the security plan. Uh, and just a, a kind of some additional information, the, all that information is already covered in the state application. Um, so, and we do get a copy of the state application so we can reference the security plan in the state application. But as a, you know, if a criminal is going to obtain that information, I'd rather the state be liable for it than the county be liable for it. So, if that information is still available to us, it's just we're not going to require it in the use of I have a question. Has there ever been contemplated some kind of a redaction system between the city and the state? Because these 
are some pretty intimate details of business operation. It just doesn't seem fair that we're publishing, or they're publishing, the private information that could lead to liability. But in, I absolutely agree with you. Um, the only things that the state is redacting right now is a social security number, birth date. Not even birth date, no. They started doing birth date. They've okay, started, they started doing birth date. Oh, I don't know if they're required, but they've been doing it. Um, but to my knowledge, those are the only two pieces of personal information that they're redacting. And at one time, they were talking about trying to redact the address of the people because people were concerned about their homes being burglarized they're being attacked, so there has to be some level of security to provide the people who own these businesses. Right. Okay, so if we might request that you guys draft a letter and bring it back to us. Talking about redaction, the beacon forward. I was just going to say, Jill is here. Is this something that you guys have talked about or discussed on your end? I know that's something that the Assistant Attorney General and the Board have discussed, but it's ultimately a Board decision. And I think it would be wise for us to communicate our concerns on the topic to them that the information should be supplied, but it should be redacted to the public. You know, maybe you guys can come up with a draft communication for us between you guys for this. Thank you. Okay, next. If I may add two additional points. Uh, um, Mr. Wilson pointed out this about the states and um, uh, the really like security cameras in Oklahoma, so it was, and, uh, I said, well, we can do it first. We can stay with our suit. So, cool. so that just meant to be like a catalyst for the state to actually follow uh, uh, our lead. And then the second point I want to make is uh, what you said, Mr. Constant, about the information being confidential and so forth. That was one other uh, approach that we consider is um, perhaps the security bank plan should be confidential information, you know, not subject to public disclosure. And if things are requested, that allows us to redact because it's confidential. So uh, we took this approach, uh, Mr. Wellington's recommendation, and uh, it's really your opinion. Thank you. So I guess moving along from the S version draft, uh, the next change is um, on page five. And um, there's several places that tie into uh, similar themes. Uh, I guess if you look at line 15, we're deleting the, the uh, straight line, which is with new language and, uh, in, the, in the initial ordinance. And we're deleting as measured, which is current code language. And uh, we basically talked about this simply as the crow flies, language and so forth. And uh, talking to Mr. Yao, I apologize, I took too long to you know, get through this, but we're here now in the S version. But basically, uh, in other provisions in Title 21, the language pretty much for the separation distances for like uh, adult-oriented establishments and uh, telecom towers, the language for separation distance typically says at least X feet from the protected land use, you know, and that's it. So at least it's pretty much uh, measure the closest distance and it's got to be more than that, uh, whatever number of feet is. And what I one, wanted to do here in the uh, 21.05.55 and um, the other or the top 21 section at the end is just make our language similar for separation distance description uh, protected uses as it is in other places in Title 21. And so the legal reasoning behind that, it doesn't seem like a big deal, I guess. And it may not ever be, but uh, this just insulates us against the legal argument that says and uh, relies on rules of statutory construction that courts use. It says if you use language in one place and different language in another place, kind of the same subject, separate distance, that you must mean something different, you know, in one or the other. To use the same language, they don't mean the same thing. So this just prevents somebody arguing, well, when we say we use a straight line, we mean something different than at least can speak from protecting use as it's used in other places in Title 21. So we're just making it consistent so there's no confusion. And then uh, Mr. Yao, you also said that uh, this change in this S version, it uh, allows, I guess, application in consistent policy in the planning department for visual instances or something like that. Do I understand that right? Uh, uh, right, just kind of uh, repeating what you had mentioned earlier, thing where in other sections of the code, you know, we, we state that said use must be, uh, telecommunication towers have to be 200 feet away. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we don't state, you know, 200 feet as measured on grade in such and such manner and such and such angle, we just say 200 feet uh, from the tower. So if, if it were to be uh, called into question um, that we have two different measuring methods, uh, as, as Dean pointed out, that, that may be something that uh, we want to consider changing to, to the consistent language and code that's in other parts. Okay, so I'm not involved in that section, though. What's the significance of the January 1, 2017 date? It seems like we're passing a rule that we're making retroactive. So the January 1, 2017 date, um, that goes back to, if I can remember the AO number, I think it's 2017-55. It's um, so that this was a stricter, um, place additional restrictions on applicants who had already applied to the state and initiated the state application. Um, and then I believe this ordinance, can't recall the effective date, but um, it essentially put in a protection there so that uh, if somebody had already made the investment in a building uh, and was paying rent and initiated state application, that they would not then be kicked out by the additional regulations we put in um, but uh, that January 1st, 2017 may seem like, well, that was a year ago. Um, but the uh, state right now is working to clean up how many of these initiated applications that have essentially gone nowhere. Um, so trying to go through that list and, and kick the people out that are uh, pursuing a, a license and any further. Um, and once we have that list and we know that nobody would fall into this anymore, then we could look at moving that January 1st, 2017, but we don't have the information available to us right now to allow us to eliminate that January 1st, 2017. And so this doesn't change the strictness at all of what was existing before it now. It's really just a language change. Correct. Thank you. Okay. So, um, if there were any questions about it, <coughs> change on page five. Um, I guess we can down to the bottom. Uh, Subsection F starts separation distance required on page five. Separation distance required subsections 2C, 2B above is uh, being put in place of this distance, and that's just a clarifying language we so start with this distance between these two bits. Well, one section. Um, and then the next change at the top of page six is consistent with that separation distance measurement change. Uh, so moving on to the next point, the separation change, I think is uh, to all code section six. Uh, page nine, um, and this is just a change to all code section 21, 15, 20. And all of these changes on page nine and uh, ten are basically things we were doing the new code change that I just described for separation distance and for the security uh, cameras that we did show on the security pad. So that's what we have for our rest version draft so far. But there's more uh, <laughs> for anyone, any questions about those. So uh, we also distributed for today's meeting a little memo I wrote and uh, a variance uh, request document. So if I could put the variance request document, it's uh, got, I guess, a description of the issue for a site location at 1901 West Diamond Boulevard. And this came up for the committee um, about a month and a half ago. No, better second. Another one near. Uh Holy uh, across the street from that Golden Star. Yeah, Burlington. Burlington, Burlington Co Factory. Co yeah, this proposed location is across the street. So, uh, that applicant, I guess they have some different application gaps. Yeah, so, uh, uh, but we actually uh, decided against applying for the variance, and they're going to be pursuing a short plat at the subdivided property so that they need the two different separations. Wow. Yeah. From Hotline. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's the yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. Expensive. Yeah, it's going to take some time. Too. Well, a variance yeah. is expensive too, though, right? Yeah. Well, a, a variance isn't a, you know, it's a 50 50 shot whether you're going to get it's it. Free. And, uh, oh, okay. Is the variance free? Uh, no, the variance does have a fee as well. It says 3900 Well, that. Okay, 
Yeah, but there is the I thought the Yeah, but it, it's hard to in concurrence with the regular special needs permit application, but um, given that the variance was a chance and given that the short plat subdivision process is a guarantee that they'll meet the subdivision, if they decided to go with the guarantee, then go with the change. So we don't need to really get into the sewer this time. No, you don't need to, but uh, the reason I asked this to be stupid to get this one's meeting is uh, the amount of three illustrates issue that uh, my memo here was trying to reach us. So uh, the chair Wellington asked that I draft up language that would allow the 200 foot separation distance to be measured alternative in an alternative way or in an alternative points instead of outline to outline as a piece of code now. And the reason is for situations just like this one, and we can imagine that this might come up again, where we have the proposed use right and uh, protected land use that's far removed, but the lot line that the protected land use is on, but a bunch of multiple uses in strict law, and talking about the lot line. I mean, it's actual distance. I think I remember was more than a thousand feet, but lot line, the lot line across Diamond Boulevard is less, just less than two hundred. But the real intent and spirit of separation distance is that there are going to be more than 200 feet, which they are. Even if you have just protected use of the parking lot around here, if it's the only use they are, uh, I think the spirit of 200 foot separation distance uh, is really kind of, uh, not the just, it, it's a little arbitrary, I guess I'd say, the way it's applied. So what I've done here, or what we're asking the comments guidance on, is uh, I have to address the situation in code language, and I've uh, drafted a little paragraph explaining the situation, and then having two choices for language A, B, and C. And uh, basically, um, I'm not sure how detailed how many one to get to. I'm not sure if you are in the like, type like I used this morning. But uh, all of these amend language at um, 2155, Excuse me, 2105 or 5582F. I guess we should probably look at what that's going to be in the S version, which would be page, um, page 5 uh, of the S version draft. And this language I'm proposing would just go on as a subparagraph to A2A for um, line 19. So, and the language that I've drafted up. Is uh, first of all, it is the same, um, and it's actually suggested by the constituent to the chair of um, the And the owner operator is a productive use, it's not with the owner of the land, the tenants are not the landowner. The 200 foot separation distance does not apply. So uh, that first choice just is to uh, get rid of the separation distance for a situation like this. Um, so that wasn't by drafting. I've drafted V and C, and B will say um, pretty much that if uh, the protected uses at least C or restricted by the D or least to a separately defined unit, you know, we can define boundaries with walls and separate the unit from other units and commercial tenants at these areas. Um, defined unit for structure on a lot of multiple separate tenants or uses of separation shall be at least, and this is putting it in an alternative measurement. 200 to 400. And then instead of that line, uh, measured to the main public interest to the building, protected use, or um, building support exterior versus for each least unit, plus the exterior feature attached to the unit with the protected use. So uh, looking at, you know, the building Burlington Coat Factory and protected use. I agree that protected use is main entrance is somewhere like here in the corner of the building, which is definitely probably, it's more than 200 feet, I think more than 400 feet. So the alternative distances at the point of measurement from the lot line for the proposed marijuana use to instead of the lot line for the protected use the entrance and so forth. So that was option B. Um, and I should, I guess, I don't think planning's got to that this in this language. So we have some time for them to get their feedback here before we uh, add this to the S version because we're at uh, about seven. So option C uh, is similar to my second version except instead of um, stating things that says 
that simply considers these different factors um, before deciding to go for an alternative measurement. So, um, should I read that through as well? Um, we have 15 minutes. Um, okay. Does anyone well, feel like it's. Oh, I guess I'll just go ahead and brief. What? Mr. Chairman, I, my question is on a couple of times here, um, he's got 200 question mark, 300 question mark, 400 question mark feet. So do, do we need to make a policy decision on what that number is? Is, is that why that's in parentheses there? That's exactly why it's there. I uh, don't want to make that decision. Should the distance be a little longer because of that measuring the lot line, measuring to go the entrance instead? So perhaps it should be a bit more than two feet, which is the basis in call right now. Um, Any discussion on that? Call, of course, you can text it. I'll read it. Huh. Is that, <coughs> this is something the whole body is going to have to discuss with this other day. Of course. Uh, just what he's talking about is drafting up an amendment, and he's the uh, question mark is, you know, we can remove that now, or we can leave it to the field. Uh, Yes, uh, just from the planning department perspective, but we just, as Dean said, we haven't really had a chance to really vet um, any of the proposals uh, thus far. Um, I will try and do so. I'm actually leaving the state next Tuesday for two weeks. Um, so I hopefully I will try and get to this uh, as soon as I can. I'm going to try and uh, propose any revision or order uh, since all the things are so long. Okay, then I imagine we'll see an amendment to the S version that includes this, whatever the department is proposing. And without it's question marks. Without question marks. No clarity. Thank you. Um, other matters then on the topic of the. I agree. Option A is too loosey goosey. Yeah, it, there seems like there's, to me, it seems like there's too many ways around that one. But I can imagine. I'm not even in the business, so. I think of, from my perspective, May is always good language, give you some of the flexibility to make a decision. But I know that the petitioners like certainty, and so that's the tension that we're looking at here. I'm the same way. So she said she could go with B or a different version of C. Other conversation? Do we need a recommendation on this or are we just going to hold for the department to have the review? I'd rather really hold for the department to review. That's their expert time. Yep. Do you want to mention um, that third option C it requires an agreement uh, or consent from uh, the owner of the lots where the protected use is located and the uh, owner operator of the protected use is the same person. And uh, that was kind of taken from a um, similar uh, reduction of separation since for cell towers and similarly they require if, if one reduction consent from the protected bank so Isn't it's a, a question on that, that isn't it a requirement that these businesses have permission of the landowner if they're leasing?
wanted a marijuana establishment to move into their complex, but there was a type of land use inside their complex, they may say, hey, we want to boot you out or something like that. Um, it, we would also get into a situation where we'd have to figure out if the protected land use, if they are leasing a space, are they in good standing with the landlord, are they making the rent payments? Um, yeah. And if they are making the rent payments and are, uh, if the landlord wants to kick them out, do we need to consider them to actually be there? Uh, it, it can kind of complicate things for this. So, um, I understood from Mr. Wells, he mentioned to me that the owner of this strip mall, Burlington Coat Factory, is having problems at an inquiry, but the protected use, the other use of the church, and uh, they might not have to do such a thing. And we need consent to that. Uh, so, uh, consider the person that was on a specific situation, that's what you mentioned to me. Perhaps the owner would sign an agreement in the uh, church would move out. And that might be what happens with this application. <laughs> so uh, in option C, there are put an agreement from both of them. It doesn't have to be that way. That might be a thing for the telecom towers, just the owner of the land that needs to agree and the thing about the tenant and so forth. I'm sort of tenant because the type of situations we'd be looking at to sort of balls with uh, tenants, so, uh, which isn't telecom tower situation, it's usually a bit of talking about uh, residential uses for protected use. So, anyways, um, just wanted to point out the distinction. Yeah. Do you know what happens if I own a building? I've got no problem with marijuana based on that, but I sell my building to Amy, but Amy does have a problem. Does that then require the marijuana place that I had no problem with to move? Or does that no, con no problem with it run with the property. It's the lease. I think the yeah, lease. Uh, I think if we're requiring an agreement to waive the separation distance or uh, a regional alternative separation distance measurement, that, that agreement would contain language that says this applies to your signs and errors and so forth. So if it's ever transferred, it carried through. And you know, you don't get to have a new owner saying, I don't want this anymore. And I just want to give these balance of certainty. They have not to contribute to it. And I just want to give some certainty so they don't have this happening to them because it can happen. Well, I have a feeling that land rights are going to trump the rules of marijuana licensure. That a landowner can, if they buy a building, at some time in the future say, I'm changing the use of this building, I'm changing the use of this office. And so I don't think there's much we're going to be able to do to stop, you know, foreign ideas and property ownership rights to provide certainty. I think that's going to come down to the relationship of the licensees to the owners of the buildings, the new owners, maybe opt to buy the building. I just, as much as I would love us to grant certainty, I don't see it happening. Uh, I think that uh, that kind of relates to the due diligence that the buyer of commercial property would need to go through and be able to see what applies here. Uh, and if it's afterwards, it's uh, oh, matters more. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If, if, if you look at some of the leases that are in some of these packets, um, and, and look at the the wording, a lot of times it's a lease for so many years with an option for another so many years. And so, but what could happen when all those options have come to the to the end? Then the landlord is in a situation where he could probably not renew the lease. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, you're correct. It's just about how we draft the lease. You know, sometimes it's option to buy. Sometimes it's you know five years with an extension for another five years. You know, these these businesses put a lot of capital into it, so if they're smart. They don't negotiate a short lease. Obviously, they negotiate a long lease, but a long lease with options for the tenant to get out if the business isn't going the direction that they they think it should go. So, I mean, it doesn't hurt to have those assigns and um, errors language that Dean was talking about that would be, you know, helpful to um, give us a tight to in on. If you opt to do this agreement, you know, the problem is I just want to remind you of the of one um, extract um, manufacturing case where it was actually, it's on Hillside, it's, um, it's Hillside Natural Wellness. We were required by the muni to get an agreement with a private landowner to, in case there was a fire, be able to use a private hydrant, and it cost us. $50,000. Mm. No shit. 
I mean, it was amazing, and that was required, and we paid that to the private the private owner who had the hydrant because the city didn't have a hydrant. Even though the city fire department said, hey, if there's a fire, we're going to use that hydrant. We don't care what your agreement says. So, but, you know, the fire department didn't let us pass through their review unless we had that agreement, and we couldn't get that agreement without paying a lot of money. And so, like, in a church's perspective, it, it maybe isn't a bad thing because, you know, $25,000 for the church could be cool. I mean, that could be a really positive thing for the community. But in other situations, it could be kind of extortion. It, it actually does yeah. sound extortion yeah. in the yeah. with the church. That sounds like extortion to me. Yeah, it sounds extortion. And I think the idea of connecting it to the, the protected use is not good because we have seen, I have seen personally, at least three occasions where a church intended to move into a location just to stop one of these businesses and I think that's not a fair use of the land use rules. I think it's an abuse of kind of power. But maybe give language that says, you know, we'll give extra, de- like, you know, some kind of substantial deference if there is a community, uh, negative community yeah. reaction, yeah. something yeah. like that, where we're kind of thing. thinking yeah. more yeah. about those, those terms. All right, so what I understand then is that there will be a few amendments coming forward, one after review, one that we've already directed, Otherwise, we expect to see this for us on the January 9th. Yeah. All, right. All right, any other matters to come before us? Sorry to leave early, but we got another party to go to. Here.